Hello and welcome to this video all about using text in Photopea or Photopea or Photop or whatever you want to call it. So in order to use text in Photopea, we are going to select the text tool. Now the text tool is this T down here in the bottom left uh, and this will give us uh, the ability to insert text. I'm going to click on it and I will, you'll notice that there are a couple of options I can configure up here. Now I can also configure them if I just go ahead and put the text in. So we're going to do it both ways. Firstly, we're going to put in our text straight away. So now that I've got the text tool selected, I'm just going to click in my document. Okay, it's loaded that font for me and you can see I've got this little thing on my, in my image here. So I'm going to um, put in some text. So let's put in Mr. Johnson Computing and I have got my text there. And if I'm happy with it, I can press this tick up here in the top. Job done. I've got my text in here. If I'd like to move it around, I'll make sure I've got this layer selected, go up to my select tool and I can click and drag and I can move it around. Now I can also add in text, but I can be a bit more thoughtful about how I want it to look. So I'm going to do exactly the same phrasing, but I'm going to choose my font first. Up here at the top, I'm going to click where it says Deja Vu Sans and it is going to give me, oh, come back. It's going to give me a whole range of fonts that I can use in here. Uh, and it will also give me a preview of how they look. So, oh, look, there's lots of lots of different ones here. Let's use this kind of handwritten -y one because that'll look quite different to the other one. Okay, that has just updated this text because I've not actually, I've got this layer selected. I've not actually uh, written any new text. And so my current text has been updated. And if I change the size, that will update my current text because I've got this selected. If I had the background selected and I change this, it's not going to change anything. It's actually just going to change what the text I'm about to put down is going to be. So let's change our font from that to this Deutsch Gothic, this German Gothic font. And let's also change the color. Let's make it maybe a more blue color. And so now when I click down, it will be writing in that font. And you can see at the top here, it says the font has loaded. So let's do Mr. Johnson computing. And you can see that I set the size down to eight pixels. So it's come out really small. Now, if I'm happy with that, I'm going to press the tick. So I am happy with that, I press the tick. And so now I've got two layers. They're both called Mr. Johnson computing because they're just named after what I've written. It's not very helpful. Typically, you wouldn't have two bits of text called the same thing. So I'm going to rename this. I'm going to double click on this layer and I'm going to just put at the front, I'm going to put top. Uh, and on this one, I'm going to jump to the front. I'm going to put bottom just so that I know which one is which. There we go. Okay, fantastic. So if I want to edit the bottom one, maybe I want to make the size a little bit larger, I can bring that up as long as I've got this layer selected. Okay. If I select the top layer, I might want to change the color. So as long as I've got this top layer selected, I can now jump into the color picker by clicking on this button or this block of color here. And I can go through the colors and maybe pick myself a nice color, depending on what you think is nice. And there we go. I've changed the color. So these are two different ways of kind of adding text. Now, the last thing I just want to cover is if I have my text, so I've got my text here at the top, my text here at the bottom, and I want to update it, if I want to add something to it, I'm going to press the T again for text. And if I hover my mouse over the text, you can see that it changes from a pointer to a carrot. A carrot is the name we call that symbol. It looks like a bit like a capital I, but we call that carrot, C-A-R-E-T. In fact, let's get rid of Mr. Johnson. Now that I've clicked on it, now that it's changed to a carrot, I can get in here and edit this. It's called a carrot. Okay, oh, don't need to enter. If I hit enter, it's just going to give me a new line. It's not going to enter the text for me. So I need to press the tick to confirm that. And so uh, this is called a carrot. You might not have known that. Um, and so I've been able to add in text like this. Now, text is a special type of thing. You'll see here that we've got a big T in the box here. And if I try and grab a brush or maybe an eraser and erase a little bit. So let's say I wanted to on this carrot, I've changed this now, this is now carrot, let's update our layer name to represent that. If I wanted to erase a little bit of this, let's zoom in on, oh, that's out, let's select in and zoom in. If I wanted to erase a little bit of this, I need to uh, get an eraser that's big enough, first of all, maybe that's a little bit too big. And I've got my eraser tool now, uh, but it's not going to like it when I try and erase. Let's have a look. Ah. Text layer 
text layer must be rasterized first. Rasterize? Um, do we want to rasterize? Well, as soon as we rasterize the text, we won't be able to edit it. Essentially, what it's going to do is it's going to take it from being text and it's going to turn it into just being pixels. So Photoshop will no longer understand that it's a C, an A, an R, an E, and a T. Instead, it will just be like, this is a bunch of pixels and this is just how I'm going to display them. And I'll show you what that kind of means and how that works. So I'm going to press OK. I'm going to, if I didn't want to rasterize this, I could press cancel. But let's see. Let's see what happens if I press OK. So I pressed OK, and now I should be able to edit this. Yep, I can. So I'm going to just get rid of this line here. OK, lovely. So I've edited this text. Let's zoom out a little bit. OK, so I've got rid of that little thing. Maybe I didn't want it or something. And you can see now that in the thumbnail over here, we, at the top, we've got a T to say that this is text. This top Mr. Johnson computing, we just got a big T telling us it's text. Here, though, we've actually got a thumbnail of what it looks like because Photoshop or Photopia is no longer recognizing this as actual text. In fact, it's just recognizing it as pixels. And when we rasterize something, we turn it from whatever it was, such as a sequence of letters, and we make Photoshop just think of it in terms of pixels. And so if I grab the type tool now and I hover my carrot over Mr. Johnson Computing, I can click in here and I could change this. I could change this to, uh, let's say, Mr. Dot J Computing. OK, cool. And I can press the tick to say I'm happy and that's fine. However, if I do the same, if I click on the text tool down here and now hover over carrot, I get nothing. If I hover over here, I get the carrot. If I hover over carrot, I don't get it. OK, because I've rasterized it. It's no longer seeing this as text. It's like, why would I show you a carrot? This isn't a text layer. This is just a random pixel layer. It's just got loads of pixels in it. Um, for those of you that don't know or might not have heard the word, a pixel is just the smallest part of an image. So each square here is a pixel and those pixels make up our image. You cannot get anything smaller than a pixel when you're talking about digital graphics and images. OK, so. Um, that's something to bear in mind when you're working with text. If, do you want to rasterize it? Because now I've, I'm stuck. That's, I can't edit that. That is carrot for the, for the rest of this document. I'd have to delete it and maybe make a new one, and that could be frustrating. So um, bearing that in mind when you're using text is really important. I hope you find this helpful, and I will see you in the next video. Sweet.